Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Thanks for being here today. Um, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, it's a beautiful day here. Uh, the sun is shining and I'm looking forward to my morning walk after I do this uh, message to you. I'm so happy that you join me for these talks because they're always, uh, for me, topics that I'm dealing with myself or things that are on my own mind. You know, I'm on the same journey as you guys are. <laughs> We're all, you know, moving into this transition in our 50s and 60s and it's a pretty exciting time. So I'm excited to be here with you. Now, I've got a really interesting topic that I want to chat with you about today. It's one that I think is going to touch your heart. It's something um, that, yeah, that we all deal with, and I think that it's going to be helpful, hopefully. So um, I wanted to, first of all, though, mention to you, because several of you have asked me in email about our deck of cards, our inspirational cards. Now, these cards, there are 46 of them, and they all touch on subjects that um, are on our mind. They're beautiful cards, in my opinion. That are the artist we uh, worked with is just amazingly talented. And uh, on the back of each card, I wrote a short paragraph um, just talking about that theme. And um, if you're interested in uh, getting a deck of these cards for yourself or as a gift, you can check the link below. And um, I use them every day. I go through the deck and pick one kind of randomly. And then I, um, I talk about it to myself <laughs> and reassure myself off is to give you confidence and to give you actionable things you can do to deal with some of these amazing opportunities that we have. So my tea, I forgot my tea, it's my echinacea and elderberry. It's a puka or paka tea and I like this one. It's kind of a fruity uh, taste. It's echinacea which is supposed to be good for your health and can you see how kind of reddish color. But anyway I've got a little, new little mug I bought. <laughs> <laughs> I love mugs. But anyway, I hope that uh, you've got a cup of tea or, or coffee, something that you love, and we can chat. Let's have a conversation. Um, this story was actually uh, based, uh, written on a, an article by one of our bloggers, uh, Stephanie Raffalock. Stephanie has been writing for 60 and Me for some time, and I really love her work. She is such a talented writer, and it was such an honor, really, to have her writing for us. And she wrote this article um, on how to bounce back from failure. And when I read it the first time, you know, it was it was just a, an article that I was publishing, but I read it a second time and it really touched me. And I want to thank Stephanie for writing this article so that I could chat with you about it, because I don't think there's one of us that hasn't gone through what she went through or is maybe still going through. I don't know. But she said, of course, we all know the J.K. Rowling story. You know, J.K. Rowling was a very impoverished, poor, single mom who wanted to write. And she sat in a, the Elephant Cafe in Edinburgh. I've been there. And she wrote her Harry Potter book. And of course, it's become a, you know, a phenomenon. And she's an extremely wealthy woman these days. We all know her story. She kept on trying 40 rejections by publishers until she found the right one. And she and Stephanie also is a writer. She wrote her first novel and uh, sent it off to um, a very well-known lit um, literary agent who sent it off on her behalf to many publishers. And a couple of months passed and then Stephanie got the answers, which were nice work, very beautiful writing, but no, and 40 or so rejections. And she said, you know, I know theoretically I should be able to get over this, but something about being older makes me feel more vulnerable. And I totally related to that because as you've got less time ahead of you. I mean, we never know, do we, <laughs> when this is, you know, when we're going to have our last uh, you know, breath. But we, we assume that as we get a little older, we've got less ahead than we've got behind. And somehow failure feels more difficult. It feels heavier. And, you know, the thought is, am I going to make it, you know, am I going to live to manifest my dream? To have a published book in, in her case? Am I going to, um, you know, quit, which is one option, or am I going to keep going? Those are the only two choices. And she actually wrote some, something. I wanted to read it because it's so, it's so powerful. And she said, you know, the, uh, this one, the second one of keeping going is more demanding because, well, it's harder. You know, it's harder because you've been rejected and that's a horrible thing. But she said, failure becomes the guide that opens the doors to dig deeper into your psyche and keep going. You can turn time, take time to mourn your disappointment. And then she says, hit a mental reset. 
Now, I know women that are listening to this are probably re- reflecting on their own lives and things that have happened to them in their life where, you know, they've been they've really mourned a disappointment or a failure or didn't get the job or didn't get the uh, didn't achieve the goal they wanted. And then they say, you know, OK, here's a mental reset press the button. And there's always a moment when that happens. Um, I had a moment like that after my divorce. And I, I, I will share it with you one day because it was just so traumatic and so difficult that I, um, I've kind of kept it to myself. But one day when we're talking about that, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it. But it was that moment, that mental reset, when I knew it was time to change my, the way I saw it. And she actually said that she was eating a brownie or a brownies, lots of food at night one night and thought, this woman is like, she could just fail forever. She looked at herself and thought, this is crazy. And so she decided, she was determined that she wouldn't stop. She would either publish that book or she would die trying and both would be just fine with her. (laughs) I love that attitude. But she said that, you know, certainly as you get older, these decisions and these mental resets become harder. And true success, you know, really to find fulfillment is regardless of the outcome, you give it your best. You know, you try. You try your very, very best. But as she says, as you get older, it's 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 more complex. And as Lynn Slater, beautiful fashion blogger, uh, said to me once, uh, aging, Margaret, is profound. <laughs> I think I've said that phrase like 10 times, you know, this week. Is, is like, Aging is profound. It's very profound. Uh, it takes you deeper in yourself than you ever thought you would go. It takes you um, further in pushing your efforts to succeed at those things you want to do. And as Stephanie says, which I think is quite beautiful, you know, we almost need failure in order to grow. We need it to underscore how some how important something is to us. And that failure actually can motivate you. It can give you the determination to keep going. And failure, to be honest, is, is not very pleasant anytime, whether you're 15 or 50 or 100. Failure is difficult. But if you just can let go of the sweat, the time's running out kind of thing. You can actually reset your, your, your mental mindset and do it and achieve your goal. Now, I haven't spoken to Stephanie in a while, so I don't know whether she's had that book published or where she's at with her life, but I'm hoping and praying that she has had the opportunity to, to do it, to get that goal achieved. Have you had failures like this in your life or disappointments? I won't call them failures because, as as Stephanie says, they're not really failures. They're just doors to opportunity. But have you ever had a a disappointment that you almost gave up and quit? Or did you quit? Maybe that was the right decision. But anyway, on that theme, I actually was looking at the Aging Beautifully deck (laughs) and I found a card that I think really, really resonates with this message of um, determination and not giving up. And that's this one. It says, never give up. And if Stephanie had picked this card up today, this is what she would have read. <laughs> you didn't make it this far by giving up when, you, when the going got tough. Your future will be filled with challenges waiting to become opportunities. Embrace them. You are free, you are very, you're too special to give up now. You deserve everything that this life has to offer. So take it. Don't give up. I hope that you're watching Stephanie and that you read that and all the people that are going through change challenges and want to make that decision, give up or go forward. I hope this one tells you to go forward. So take good care, everybody. I hope that you've enjoyed the conversation today. I'd love to have your feedback on what you've learned from failure at this stage of your life. What have you learned from failure? And what have you done to overcome feelings of failure? Disappointment. Anyway, it's been great chatting with all of you. I love these moments with our our community. Thank you again for being here. And I look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.